Okay guys, this will be a quick video on installing Ace X069 into an Aerofoam L39. This is the original prototype it has flown already, it has had three different engines installed. I loaned it to a buddy of mine and now just got it back. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the turbine on there. The first thing you see in there is the rail mount I already have the screw holes. They already come pre-drilled at the factory and they're set up for the 60 and 80 size ASX turbines. Um, the fuel tanks are already plumbed, they were already in there. Like I said, this plane has flown before many times. So I'm just going to go to the basics and go ahead and set this up. Alright guys, I mean this is going to be a kind of boring. So first thing I'm going to do is just place it in there. Uh, it only has two connections. One is for the motor to ECU cable, which is this one, and then the other one is your fuel connection. So, I'm going to place it in there. Grab my four screws. <clears throat> Grab my four mounting screws and just put them in. Now, um, you're wondering if the pipe to turbine distance is uh, set correctly or if I already measured it. Well, this one already had this same engine installed, just different serial numbers, so I know that's been checked. You want a minimum of about, the very minimum you want is about 75.75 inch um, distance between the, where the pipe begins and the end of the tailpipe of the actual turbine. Um, this one's already been checked. You like to say the minimum you want is about a uh, 0.75 inch. Optimal is about an inch to an inch and a half. This one does have an inch and a half on it. Uh, distance between the end of the tailpipe of the turbine and the beginning of the actual uh, turbine t uh, thrust pipe. That does not mean the cone. Just the beginning of where the actual pipe begins. So. Um, once the screws are in, we begin our electrical and fuel connection. Uh, there you are, all the screws are in there. I'm going to go ahead and connect the cable. Now, normally I run it under the tray and everything to make it look neat. Right now, for installation purposes, I'm just going to run it through the side here and let you see how it's supposed to go. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my fuel connection. Okay, now depending on where, how big of a battery you're gonna have, a lot of people install the fuel pump in the engine compartment and that's fine. Just keep it, you know, where none of the fuel lines are touching the casing. You can install it here or in the other side and then just have it there so it's close to the turbine. Um, because I'm using small batteries, my uh, fuel pump is gonna go in the front. All right guys, since my UAT is currently full, this is the line coming out of the UAT. I put a hemostat in there closing up the, the line so gas doesn't spill everywhere. Uh, this is the fuel pump. It has two arrows on it. It has um, the line on the bottom is just a loop and it just tells you which way the, the gas is going. You don't have to be concerned with that one because you're just looping the two of them. The one in the top has another arrow on it. The arrow points the direction of the gas coming out, going in and coming out. If you see the arrowhead is po actually pointing that way. So the gas comes in here from the fuel tanks and goes out to the turbine on this side where the arrowhead is pointing to. So. Um, not everybody does uh, safety wire on their lines. I highly recommend it. It's up to you if you do or do not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it on this one because I did it on all of them anyway. Uh, on all of my installations. And then I'm going to plug it in. And then I'll just show you um, how I do it in here. And since this is going to be in close quarters here. Or a confined area. I'm just going to do it with the same hemostats that I'm using to plug up this hole the plug, I mean the, the fuel line so that it doesn't spill gas while I'm 
connecting it. So there's the fuel line connected to the side where the arrowhead is not pointing the 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 back end of the of the arrowhead is pointing there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install it down here afterwards. But first, um, I'm just going to do a simple safety wire tie on there. So I get the wire tie, I already cut off a piece, and then just make two circles on it. And then once you uh, make the two circles or the two loops of it around and bring them together, put them over the barb, not all the way to the back. I, as you notice on the other ones, I have them towards the front. Get the, the two loops over the barbs. And once you do that, just start, you know, crisscrossing them together. Now, yes, there is a tool to make these special pliers. I have them in the garage right now. So right now I'm just gonna show you how to do it with simple hemostats. Um, so all you wanna do is basically just tie it up to it to the, the, the safety wire tightens up on the barbs. It's just basically so the fuel line will never come out. And just checking to make sure it's over the barbs and not at the end of the actual fuel line, like that. You will, like I said, you wanted it more or less in the middle. And just make some ties on there. Now once it gets nice and tight, uh, it's still a little bit loose, so I'm going to tighten it some more, but I'm going to make some more uh, loops here. And basically, I know when it's, t when it's tight enough, uh, you see that when you try to spin it, there is some resistance. It doesn't really want to move there. And then uh, cut off the excess on there. So right now, I'm just going to hold one side. And just get your snips, whatever you have handy. These are uh, lineman uh, scissors from the telecom people. Cut off the excess and get it out. And then you have the, the zip tie right there, excuse me, the wire tie. It's the safety wire. So you just fold it in, make like a nice little loop in there. Fold it into itself. You don't want to leave it sticking up the way it was, because that'll stab you. Um, when you're not careful, it'll, it'll just go ahead and, and stab you. So now that I have it in there, I'm gonna route it out of the way here, under the, the other line that's already there. And then, well, I gotta remove these two screws first, but I'm gonna mount it right here. So let me get those two screws out of the way so I can mount, mount the pump in there. Now you should always have a manual valve. Uh, it's required in the US for you to have a way to shut off the fuel in case of an emergency. It's up to you whether you have it before or after the, the fuel pump. I'm not gonna get into a big debate about which way is better. In this case, I'm gonna have it after the fuel pump. So let me get this line out of the way because this is the one that's gonna connect to here via the manual valve. Let me go ahead and connect it for right now just because it's leaking gas, leaking fuel, excuse me. Uh, so let me get the pump back in there. There's one screw. And here comes the next one. Now it's not always fun getting the screws in there where you barely have uh, room. And sometimes you'll drop them just like I did right now. Let me use the pliers to get it in there. Oops. And now I dropped it inside. Well, I thought it was inside the under the, the tray here, but it was not. Now that it's in there, let me go ahead and 
tighten it in. And there's my fuel pump. Now again, this is the line coming from the turbine back there. So what I wanna do is I wanna connect this here and then have it on and off valve here. But there's too much uh, line in here. I don't want, you know, a, a big old loop in there. I just want something small and fine in there so then I have uh, the on and off valve in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. Let me put the on and off valve in the other side for now. And I use the hemostat so it doesn't put any more fuel in there. So, let me see if I can drop some of this fuel in there into the napkin so it doesn't leak into my engine compartment. Go ahead and take off the cover here and then connect my on and manual on and off valve. Now, I want it more or less around there so I gotta cut it right here. So let me go ahead and put my hemostat on there again so it doesn't leak fuel. And I'm gonna need a napkin because as soon as I uh, cut it off right here, the pressure is gonna go off and just dump uh, fuel in there. So. So now that I have it cut off, I'm gonna go ahead and connect it. And there is my manual on and off valve connected. It's still a little bit of slack on the line. I can probably put a zip tie here to uh, hold it away from uh, where the ECU and everything is gonna be. My ECU is basically gonna go in here like so. Uh, the two lines that I'm gonna need to connect to it are the fuel pump, which is this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and run it underneath the current fuel lines right there. So the, the lines are connected or have ends on them in a way that you cannot plug them in backwards even if you wanted to try. You would really have to force it in there uh, in a way to get them to go in the wrong spot. So that's how the fuel pump gets connected. Um, I need to route the cable from the turbine into my engine compartment and I, like I said For right now for this purpose of this installation. I'm just gonna run it through the side of the fuel tanks up here in the top uh, it, Ideally what I want is to make it go underneath the, the servo tray there So let me get the line through here and then I'll connect it as well Trying to fish it through real quick. There's the line for now. And I want all the slack coming in that in the engine compartment because I don't want extra fuel line or the extra line over there to ever touch the casing of the turbine. Since it's bigger than what's really needed, I'll probably just fold it somewhere in here where it's out of sight, out of mind. And then you go ahead and connect it to the ECU. So there is the engine and the fuel pump connected to the ECU. What is left would be my 3S LiPo for the turbine and ECU. And obviously my uh, data terminal and my throttle uh, from the receiver. So once I get the receiver mounted in here, I'll go ahead and re I'll restart the video. Okay guys, we're gonna finish this off at the, at the field. Uh, I have the throttle cable from the receiver already in here. I snaked it in there so there's not a lot of uh, slack or extra cable. The one for the turbine I already labeled the ECU and I go, went ahead and just passed it through the hole there to go to the front. Uh, my data terminal or GSU is up at the front. So basically what you're going to do is make sure your signal cable, whether it's orange 
or yellowish orange, whatever that is, and then uh, or white goes through the top uh, in the, on the actual uh, ECU. It says minus plus and signal, so that's signal at the top. So you're gonna plug in your throttle cable from your e from your receiver where it says PPM on the GSU there. Excuse me, on the ECU, and you're gonna plug it in where the signal wire, whether it be yellow, orange, like the uh, or white, goes to the top. Then you get your, the one from the GSU or data terminal, however you want to look at it or call it, uh, and you're going to plug it in also facing uh, the, re the signal cable facing the top. And you're going to plug that in on the uh, ECU where it says GSU slash PC. Then your uh, power cable is an MR30 or whatever you want to call it. There's many different names, uh, EC30 or, or anyway, your power cable. You're gonna plug it in. It only goes in one way because the flat side, uh, it only plugs into one way into the actual GSU, I mean ECU there. And that actually concludes the installation of the entire turbine. Um, let me pick this up and show you guys how I have it connected. So, there is my GSU, or ground support unit, hand data terminal, however you're used to calling it. Here is my manual on and off, on and off valve for the fuel. That is the UAT, it is full now. Here is my receiver, one antenna going towards the right, towards the nose. The other one just snakes down and is a 90 degree opposite of the other one. So this one is actually just pointing straight up right there. And the power cable um, for the turbine is this one right here. I am using three uh, lithium ion, three cell 11.1 uh, volt batteries for the transmitter and the receiver. So I'm using two 3200 uh, milliamps for the receiver and one 3200 11.1 uh, for the turbine. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the radio and show you guys the GSU. So I got my radio turn on, turning on over here and it's in the wrong model. So let me go ahead and switch it real quick. So there's the radio turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my receiver batteries and my and my transmit and the GSU. So I have them labeled RX1 and uh, RX2 for the receiver. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug both of those in real quick. And then I'm gonna plug in. Now, before you plug in your, your uh, turbine, a battery or your ECU battery when your receiver lights up your uh, GSU should light up it should say engine offline and it's gonna say that because the actual ECU battery is not plugged in so let me go ahead and whoop sorry about that let me go ahead and plug in my ECU battery and you'll hear your uh, ECU there make some noise and now the airplane is ready for you to do your teach command on it now, if I was to advance the trim on it, there you go, it's ready to start. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and start it right now, it's still sitting on the bench getting ready to go flying. So that's the basic turbine installation. Thank you guys, have a good, good day.